Devin went every morning at 4.30 to the gym. That morning, like all other mornings, he gets up, he gets ready, and then he kisses me by, and as soon as he kisses me by, then I get up and start getting ready for the day. Probably somewhere between 10 and 15, he got a, a real peculiar look on his face. Yes. And I asked him, I said, Devin, what's the matter with you? And uh, I seen him kind of start looking funny, he was doing some shaking and stuff. He said the whole right side of my body just went numb. Devin kind of dropped down to the floor and, and told them that they needed to, to get help, that he, um, his right side didn't feel right. They put Devin on a stretcher and took him out, put him in the ambulance, and with Jared being a state trooper, we just jumped in his car and knew the first thing to do was to go get Stacy and to go let her know. I thought I was having a dream, somebody beating on something, and I was really hearing the door. and. Then I fell back asleep and then mom came in. She's telling me to get up. Dad's hurt. They had his head shaved and his hands tied down and he was just completely unresponsive and it was the scariest thing I ever saw in my life. On the plane ride, probably my biggest thing was I had to turn the phone off to get on the plane. And I remember flying for four and a half hours at the moment when I had just been told they weren't sure if Devin was going to live. We knew it was some sort of brain injury by the time I got in there. And we didn't know if he was going to make it or not, so I thought that was going to be may have been the last time I was going to talk to him. The doctor pulled me aside when no one else was around and proceeded to tell me that he didn't think Devin would make it. It was quite frightening and disturbing seeing him like that. And um, they took him to CAT scan. And when they came back, they pulled me in and showed me the pictures. Devin had a, a bleed that occurred on his brain stem. A lot of strokes in the brain stem uh, are fatal. It's a very important area and it's vital and it's small. What's uh, most devastating about a brain stem stroke is that if you think about it, all the nerves that originate in the brain and go down to the periphery to the body and all of those that originate in the body and come up to the brain go through the brain stem and so if you have even a small bleed in that stem you're going to affect everything that's coming up and everything that's going down you're going to affect everything he had a brain stem bleed they're just calling it a stroke at first they didn't know if it was a stroke a bleed some people call it an aneurysm, but no, an aneurysm is way worse. It's such a juxtaposition to see Devin in the hospital because he was so fit and so healthy and strong. So to see somebody like that completely debilitated and on life support, there's a weird kind of absurdity you feel to it because here's this person, you know, not even breathing on their own, but they look like, you know, a, a superhero. <laughs> Most of us didn't know that my brother had a living will that said that he never wanted any of these things to be done. He did not want to be put on life support. He did not want to live life in a wheelchair. He did not want to live life dependent. And they had had discussions, and I didn't know at the time, but they had discussions weeks prior to this. I always knew where he stood. I mean, we, we had repeated conversations about even having a trach put in, never wanted to have a trach put in, never wanted to be in a wheelchair, didn't want to live if he'd be in a wheelchair. There were moments where I felt like Devin could have chosen on his own to die. He's in ICU, he's fighting for his life, he's fighting for his life. And I kind of tell myself that he helped make that decision as well. I was really torn, because I, I knew his wishes. Parts of his family were very opposed to me following the living will or following his wishes. My thoughts were that, you know, most people make their living wills, you know, over dinner somewhere, you know, um, not in the middle of a tragedy or anything like that. If you're looking to give Devin a chance for life, put the trach in and put the shunt in and put whatever you need to do to give my brother a chance to live. 
I had a real hard time even talking about a living will at this point. I knew what Devin wanted. I knew what his family wanted. And then I was kind of somewhere in the middle. I have three kids, our oldest two children I've raised, but I'm not their biological mom. And so then I have the fear as well as, okay, what happens if Devin dies? Do I lose my kids that I've had since they were two and five? Stacy, as much as she was trying to honor Devin's decision, she had by no means made it up in her mind that she was going to, you know, let Devin die at this point. I mean, she was just as conflicted as the rest of us. That brings us to competitor number 181. He's from Central City, Kentucky. Would you please welcome Devin Dirt? Devin was one of the most driven individuals for personal health of anyone I had ever met. He took health to a level most individuals never even dream about. Anything Devin does, he does it perfectly. And that can be baking a pie from scratch or learning how to fix our daughter's hair. But anything he attempts to do, he practices it and works at it till he does it perfectly. And it was the same way with working out. He was an athlete, a bodybuilder, probably took care of himself better than I take care of myself. Bodybuilding is really simple. If you train harder than anybody else and you sacrifice more than anybody else, chances are come contest time, you're probably going to win. One of the cool things for my brothers and I is that I'm the oldest brother and I won the middleweight Mr. Ohio bodybuilding contest. Ten years later, my brother Doug, who's two years younger than me, wins the middleweight Mr. California. Ten years after that, my brother Devin wins the middleweight Mr. Kentucky. So that's really a cool thing about the Dirt Brothers. Devin Dirt. He was kind of like the anchor to what all I was doing through my life. We talked about everything. We do everything together, so it was pretty awesome. <laughs> what? What? Why are recording without any clothes on? Shouldn't you be putting clothes on? Hmm? Who are you playing with? With your phone? Who are you instant messaging? Logan. Who's she? Her. I mean him. Him? Him. Your boyfriend? Say it without smiling. No. Mmm. Say Logan is not my boyfriend without smiling. Well, if you quit making those stupid faces. I'm not. Yes, you are. Five seconds or else he's your boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Logan is not my boyfriend. Mm. He's not. He was such a perfectionist and so meticulous about his appearance, about his speech in general, his English and everything. We called him the god of grammar, the kids did growing up, because he was constantly correcting the kids for their bad grammar and English and mine. He's from up north and I'm from down south, so he was constantly picking at me and the kids about what we said. Devin married a local school teacher. He was president of a manufacturing company. He had a beautiful family. He was really living the dream, I think. Devin was in intensive care for almost three weeks. He wasn't moving. He wasn't really responding. His vital signs were up and down. His body temperature was getting very hot. His heart rate was really high. There was all sorts of things happening daily. 
Finally, he stabilized a little more, and I, you know, I remember the first day when he, you know, could just move his hand. It's amazing how grateful you can be to watch somebody's finger bend. Devin started to get stronger, and he was making progress, and it was amazing. It was awesome, you know, to, to see, you know, almost on a daily basis, Devin doing something new and, and, and better. It was three grueling weeks in intensive care before Devin's condition finally stabilized. They moved him to a state-of-the-art rehabilitation center in Louisville, Kentucky. And from day one, the battles with his insurance company started. As soon as you get your patient in the door, the first thing you're looking at is their insurance approval. You need to make your goals according to what time restrictions they give us. We have to get a stroke rehabbed in less than 100 days or benefits are cut back to the point that people cannot often proceed with the therapy they may need. Think loud. Uh, Beautiful. Uh, Keep going. Hold on to it. Great effort. His care and your scheduling of his care is completely dictated by an insurance schedule, not by what he really needs. The system that was set up in Devon's insurance wasn't an individualized system. It was a very cookie-cutter system that addressed a 70-year-old man having a stroke, not a 40-year-old healthy dad. Nothing is individualized, it seems like, from an insurance standpoint. You want to stand up here, Devin? One, two, three. Because insurance companies rule health care. Really push down through this arm real good for me, Devin. Well, we've become a McDonald's drive through society. And unfortunately, that happens a lot in health care. Devin was making great progress. He'd make little strides every day. And certainly, he's very highly motivated. He could do therapy all day long if he wanted him to. He's just starting to make these amazing gains. And now you're telling us because his insurance is up that he has to go home. Try bring your back up toward me. There you go. No more medical coverage for you. Sorry about your luck. This is just awful. Just when he's right, ready to walk with one person, you know, in the parallel bars. Well, you have about a week now, and then we're going to drop you, and then you'll get 20 visits, and then we're done with you. You know, I think the, the way that the insurance system is set up was just absolutely horrific and terrible. You have to go home with your 110-pound wife and your three little kids and expect you to get intense physical therapy there. Nobody deserved to get to stay there more. He worked harder, they said, than any patient they had ever had. He logged more therapy hours than any patient they had ever had and was progressing. So why could we not stay there? We had insurance. Why could we not stay? Makes no sense to me. when he got home to the care being drastically decreased, the rehab being drastically decreased, realizing that he's not going to just get home and go back to work. I think at that point, the depression and also the reality of, wow, this could be it for me, settled in. insurance didn't even cover her like a day nurse so Stacy wasn't going to work she's trying to raise her family you know Devin needs help just sitting up straight in a chair I mean he couldn't do anything on his own he couldn't feed himself shower shave I mean he couldn't even go to the bathroom by himself the wear and tear on Stacy was just killing her for him to come home and have his wife, who, who is a very small person, in charge of taking care of this 200-pound man as though he's a 200-pound child, I don't see how there's any way at all, you know, that they're going to be able to take care of Devin and to provide for him the things that he needs. What? Socks off. 
and to have to transfer him and help him do all the exercises and every little thing that we take for granted that they have to work so hard to do is so challenging. I, I don't know how they're going to do it. How many weigh in? Is that good? Yeah. My older brother and I would talk, and we just felt like, God, if we could just go live there and do therapy for him every day. The reality was we couldn't go live with him, and we couldn't go take care of him. And it's a horrible feeling to know that there's things to be done to help him get better, but we couldn't figure out a way to do them. To not have somebody strong enough to help him with physical therapy, to not have somebody there to help him with his speech and his movement, all those, to not have somebody there, you know, as driven as he is, you know, my frustration is, is, you know, how's he going to get these things? What's, what's, he, what's he supposed to do? For Devin to just lay there was probably the worst part of the whole thing. Because if it was up to him, he'd do everything he possibly can to get better. Devin is a bear in the gym and his life. I just knew that he okay. wasn't getting enough therapy. You're a little tighter over here than you were last time. Hey, we all wanted Devin to stay in inpatient care longer, and insurance would not let him. They wouldn't cover him. In order for him to stay there at our own expense, when we figured it out, it was about $100,000 to $150,000 a month out of our pocket. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, none of us here are, are qualified or capable of giving him around-the-clock intense therapy. Since he's been home, it's sad and frustrating because not only is he not making the gains that he was making, it's like it even seems like he's regressing some. Fabulous. I don't know what to do, you know. We're, we're just really trying to find the answers, and it's really hard. When I got back home to California, I felt horrible just leaving him like that. I knew I had to find some other way to get him the care he needed. I went to the American Stroke Association webpage and there was a story about this woman, Ruth Leike. She had had a very similar stroke to Dev and a brain stem bleed. And she'd written a really fascinating book about going to China for a three month stroke rehabilitation program and had great success with it, all for about $20,000. I just started researching it more. I wrote to her, started Skyping, video chatting with her in China, getting as much information as I could before, before I was gonna present this alternative to my family, who I suspected wouldn't be very receptive to it. You know, I was like, uh, <laughs> for real, Doug, China? Um, have you ever been to China? No. Yeah, me neither. Ch China? You want to send Devin to China? It was, it was, it was messed up. It was a lot of tension, and that all of a sudden came between, you know, my brother and I, who love each other more than anything, um, over trying to make the right decision for our brother. There were lots of concerns. Um, and um, legitimate concerns and fears, tons of fears about China, tons of fears about, you know, acupuncture, about Devon's health, um, whether these were just a bunch of quacks over here, all those kind of things. Hi. Hello. I've got everybody, huh? Yeah, look, you got the whole gang. This is my brother Devin, who I've been telling you all about. Oh, wonderful. Hi. Uh, <laughs> I hope you're doing good tonight, Devin. You're surrounded by everybody. <laughs> yeah, I am. How long does it typically take to start the process and get someone accepted into the program? Insurance will help none, but are we penalized in any way in coming back? What types of therapy did they do with you for your speech? Did they stick them in the eyelids? Do you know how many zoos there are in China? If you're getting her Diet Coke, are you going to get me American beer? There's a pizza hut only about a block away from my house. They were very interested, and I think that Devin, more than anything, was very interested. You're going to literally get treatment from the president of the hospital, President <laughs> Taiwan, from Professor Scherer, and he is the guru. He is the one that developed this entire program. He is considered by the Chinese a national treasure when it comes to acupuncture. And then Dr. Ben herself. So the top three are going to be doing your acupuncture each and every day. I'm really excited about that. Awesome. Really excited. Great. 
Devin was really sold out in his heart that, that he felt that's where he needed to be. And um, I remember I was at Devin's house before he had left. And I just remember looking in the window and just seeing him slumped over and drooling and, and my mom and his wife arguing behind him. And it was just awful, you know. And finally I got a chance to talk to Devin, you know, and, uh, and I asked him what he wanted to do. And, you know, he looked at me and said that, that he wanted to go to China. And um, I was like, cool, you know, that, that's you saying that now, you know. Now that makes everything okay. to get therapy because it's too expensive in our own United States. Right now, insurance gets maxed to the point to where they don't want to see you no more. They're done with you. They want to write you off and be done with you, and that's a shame. And hopefully when he returns, he's not in that four-wheel chair. He's going to be walking. And he's going to be talking. You got time. Are you nervous at all this morning? A little bit? You feel a little bit of apprehension? Yeah. About what part or all of it? All of the 
Which finger is? Thumb. <clears throat> this one? Bigger finger. This finger? Bigger. This one? Middle. This one? Higher now. Okay. Okay, that's your leg. Put your right leg down. <laughs> Place just your left leg. Try. Have a try. Very <laughs> Your right leg. No, your right leg. Yeah, yeah, try to raise your right leg. Come on. Just try. Relax. Relax. That's right. Relax. That's right, yeah. <coughs> uh, no, that's your left leg. As you can. Yeah, good, Devin. There you go. Okay. Good job. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Very good, Devin. Yeah. Get started. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Lana? Put the professor's hand, please. He wants to shake hands with you. <laughs> I'm trying. 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 有吗？有那就完，给它做做做为做，给拉起来，先先先把血给放拉起来。它那腿很硬，硬吧？硬，很硬。硬，特别硬。这是半斯巴的。哦，搞错了，搞错了，搞错了，搞碎了，走走走走
So just relax, let the needles have their effect, okay? About 20 minutes, they'll all come out. And then we'll start everything else that happens during the day, okay? You're not gonna have a dull moment. still? Hi. the plane and Devon's already gotten more treatment in the first day here than he did in a week back home and we're already seeing results. The doctors seem great. Devon totally surrendered to these strangers coming in and sticking him full of needles and, uh, and they assigned us a full-time orderly named Lee. He's going to stay with Devon 24-7, help bathe him, feed him, do whatever else he needs. I have to say I was uh, a little worried, didn't know what to expect, but uh, now I can't wait to see what's up for tomorrow. Pretty amazing. You haven't had that much movement in a while, have you? Oh, Devin, look at that. Wow. One day. Wow, well that's our start. I can't tell you what. That's really amazing. Thank you. Good morning. What's your name?
here. The needle. Oh. That goes all the way through. Wow. Yes, it can. <laughs> Try and lift your right leg, Devin. There it goes. Keep going. Yeah, keep going higher, Devin. You're about four inches. Keep going. Very good. Keep going. Yes. Okay. Here we go, Devin. Oh, yeah. High as you can. Nice. Devin, you're two feet off the bed. Very good. Okay, relax. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Spinning. Keep your eyes closed because you're going to take all the needles out. Daddy's doing well. He said this morning that his vision was getting better and he's he was moving his right foot and toes this morning. And that's the first time he's ever lifted his right leg, been able to lift it off the bed. So that was really, really good. He had it up pretty high today. How long does he have to lay there? His acupuncture comes out in about 20 minutes. The needles do. I'm really surprised at how well they integrate the Eastern and Western medicine. They use MRIs, CAT scans, EKGs, all the bells and whistles we have back in the States. The approach the doctors took was very deliberate and patient, which is opposite of Devin. I mean, he just wanted to do more. Today in the gym, Dr. Gu kept telling Devin, Feng Song, Feng Song, which meant relax. I think that actually drove Devin nuts, because it was here in the gym that Devin was used to being his most intense. Up. Up. Good. Up. Good. Up. Good. Up. Good. Good, Devin. Come on. Come on. Put it in your mouth. Put it in Go down, go down. There you go. Both sides. Nice. Go, go, go. Okay. Yes. Okay. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Robert, come. Is that enough? Are you tired? Is that all? Is that all? He said, is that all? How do you feel, Devin? I feel like a human pincushion. <laughs> human pincushion? We haven't experienced anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> This needle is very special. Devin, you look so cool right now. If I not tell it, cool. If you look so cool. <laughs> oh, you want, to ch you want me to change with you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't 
lived until you've had acupuncture in the tongue, he said. Oh, for a while. I'm just so happy to be able to see you. That's wonderful. That really makes me feel a lot more relaxed about everything. You look so good, Devin. You just look great. Devin's doing great. He looks better. He's sitting up straighter. He's not drooling anymore. He's even smiling, and I don't think I've seen him smile since his stroke. The improvements he's made here in the first week are pretty much mind-boggling. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next 11 weeks. I think if Devin keeps continuing to improve like this, he'll walk out of here. You know, they want Devin to get better so much. It's like they all have a very personal interest in him. And we hadn't been here that long, but it's like they all love him and they all want him to get well as much as we do. And they're not even family. Isn't that awesome? It is. Have they explained to you guys like the how, like how it works or why it works or is there research on how it works or why it works what or do they just yeah. know it well, works? So we you know, they're just, they're stimulating muscles and nerves that have been damaged and causing them, I think causing the brain to fire signals to, to them again. Now that's my guess at why it works, but you can see when they manipulate the needles, when they hit a nerve and when, you know, by his reaction, basically. Emmy. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine. Head to A. No, no, leg. Your right leg. Try your best. Okay, do. Okay, higher. Nice. You can. Okay. You can move here. Okay. Yes, yes. Go in. Very, very good. Very good. Left. Higher. Oh, my God. Higher. Good. Okay, very good. Higher. Devin, your right is beating your left. Yeah, that is uh, unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> so she said after we do acupuncture, he wants me and I and Doug to help you just stand real straight and then try and walk a little bit today, okay? I can't believe that right leg beat the left one today. I know. That's pretty good, honey. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. 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 Thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> this is my job. Yeah. I come. Look. Yeah. Well, you don't see China. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, touch my hand. Touch my hand. This way. This way. Keep going. Touch my hand. There you go. Stay left. Just like that, Devin. Stand. Come on. Stand. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Straight through body. Straight now. Straight through body. Hips under you. Straight. You for the hammer, huh? Straight. We got you, Devin. Go ahead and start trying to stand. Come on, come on. Oh, Off your fingers. Here, touch here. Yeah, yeah. Go, there you go. Up. Straight. Straight. Good, good, good. Straight. Keep going. Come on. Straight. Come on, just one more, Devin. Good. There you go. Now straight. 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 Like that. Straight. There. Almost. Yeah. Back. As much as you can. Good. Good. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. Hold it. Good. Hold it. Yeah. Good. 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 Yeah. 
Well, and that scared me. Did you, you feel, feel the earthquake? Well, uh, there was an earthquake. The building was going like this. For real? Yeah, right, right, right when they were doing your acupuncture. It's like we're all like started to feel the building sway a little bit. Yeah, Current count is 32,140 something as of this morning that had died. 9,500 were still missing from the earthquake, and over 200,000 were injured, and over 5 million are displaced. Every single one of your staff members, even though they weren't through and they're cheerful, they're all thinking about this. The Chinese way is, you know, to not let it bother them or not show that, but they're all thinking. This has been the most devastating thing. And it was just upgraded to an 8.0 on the Richter scale. I'm working hard every day and making the most out of this trip and not missing me too much and just focusing on doing what he's here to do and that's getting better. And we're gonna talk each day and I told him I'd give the kids big hugs and kisses from him and tell Zach how proud we are of him when he graduates. I know he's in good hands, so I'm okay. Zach just graduated from high school. How do you feel about him? Love me. Good, honey. Good. 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 
Going over to China, I already had kind of a negative thought process in my mind of what I was going to see and what it was going to be like. It's been like six weeks since I've seen my brother, and right before he left, I mean, he was like completely leaning over to the side and drooling, and uh, it was so sad. to his room, I didn't know what kind of expectations to have. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I was absolutely amazed. It was, it was so awesome to see the amount of progress that he had made in the short time that, you know, that I haven't seen him. To see him with my own eyes, the progression, to see him standing up when the last time I saw him, you know, he had a breathing tube in and a trachea see him standing up with very little help and walking with help. It's just absolutely thrilling to me. It's awesome. The Chinese way of helping somebody is from their heart, and they truly want you to get better because if they can help you get better, then they feel like they're doing a good job. And Devin surrendered to that, and he really worked hard at that. And they'd say, drink this, and he'd drink it. And they'd say, do this, and he'd do that. And they'd motion to him what to do and what not to do. And, and he was improving and improving and improving. And you know, they were having bets you know, on how soon Devin would be walking out of here. When I saw that, and I, and I saw the progression that he made, and, you know, and then I knew that it was the right choice you know, for them to come to China. And I found out that everything that I thought that I knew um, just really taught me that I really don't know that much at all. I'm just really looking forward to the rest of the stay here. I hope it just keeps going the way it's going. It's going to go the right spot.
it moves by itself now. Everything's good. Trust your body. Okay? That was really awesome. So are you glad you came to China? Yeah. Yeah, very glad. This is hard to leave, but it's like, and it's saying, just to see Devin walk all the way down there like that today was yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's always hard to leave, but it's a lot easier to leave when you know the people around them are taken good care of. Well, I love you. I'm so proud of you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yeah. On the wheel, it's a good day. Keep working hard, okay? All day. Been thinking about you every day. Alright? Devin seemed a little down these last few days. I don't know if it's uh, that all the family left and he's a little lonely, or maybe all this is just catching up to him. But uh, but anyway, we've got a plan to get him out of the hospital tomorrow and surprise him, get him some fresh air, and uh, I can't wait. I think maybe it'll cheer him up a bit. <laughs> Silly me thinking we could sneak him out of there without anybody noticing. We weren't back in Devin's room more than two minutes before I had a little talking to from the hospital. All right. Hey, yeah, and so, sorry for the trouble, but we'll ask you in the future. I know, I know. Okay. All righty. Uh, yeah, I, I completely understand. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Oh, shame on you. Shame on you. You are good. Buck up. Sit up straight. As straight as you can. Put that chin out and give me that look. Give me the CEO look that I know you got. You need to get that back. It's in here and it's up here. Get that back. Okay, we're gonna work on a little treat for Stacy. All right, I'm gonna have him say in a whisper, Stacy, I love you. That's an emotional thought. That's okay. Let's just work on the first word. Stacy. Shit. <laughs> Excellent. 
Do you want to do me a favor, sir? Jer. Smile. Thank you. <laughs> you can't want to hang with a good smile. Well, I saw him standing as soon as we got off the elevator. We looked out and there he was and I could tell his eyes got really big and he was excited to see us and he was standing there and no one was touching him, which was a great improvement. And I was amazed then when I got to see him walk the hallway. He hadn't really moved his right leg through before I left. He was having to have some help and maybe just kind of more or less sliding it to the side, but he was stepping all the way through and that was great to see. It was also nice to see him doing stairs. I know he's determined to do stairs. He wants to get up the stairs in our house so they can stay in our bedroom when he comes home, but I didn't think he'd be doing stairs at this point. And it was yes. really nice to see his coordination was coming along, his, his leg was bending, it was moving, and I was just super, super pleased. Once you saw it done, Doctor. Yeah. Welcome. 
<laughs> She's going to introduce you to the rest of the staff. Hello. Let's introduce. Oh. This is new doctor. Oh. What's your name? What's your name? Oh. What is it? Dr. Wu. How do you say small in Chinese? Small like Small? 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 Xiao. 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 Yeah, Xiao Wu. Xiao Wu. Uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, Is Mr. Devon Darcy here, Hi, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. Hi, you're supposed to call me Doctor. <coughs> Dr. Gray Pie. <laughs> She's pulling her foot. <laughs> Starting to see more of himself come out. He's laughing much easier. Get him. Sarah and I were practicing, trying to get him to sing, because I think that'll help the tone quality of his voice. And she and I were laying in bed with him last night singing songs, and we just all cracked up at the way he sounded. And he laughed too, so we had a lot of fun with that last night. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Do you have any questions you want to ask him? I think Devon's really enjoyed having the girls here. But now it's time for them to uh, go back home, start the school year, and that just leaves Devon and I about two weeks. And I think he's starting to realize that he just might not walk out of here on his own. Uh, we asked Dr. Ben if we think he should stay longer, and she just reminded us that there's no magic needle, and this is Devon's life journey now, and as important it is for him to continue treatment, it's just important for him to go home, be with his family, be a dad again, live his life, and have confidence that he's going to keep getting better. But uh, for now, we still got two weeks. And if I know Devin, he's not going to leave here without a fight.
Our departure was just as surreal and strange as our arrival. There was no big send-off, no hugs or kisses or teary goodbyes, just the two of us leaving quietly in the middle of the night. I think both of us were feeling a little sad to be leaving China, but also really happy to be going home. The best part was, Devin was still determined to walk out of there, and that's exactly what he did. stand though as Devin walked in and wanted you to witness that firsthand. We have so much to be thankful for this morning. Amen. Amen. president of a company, manufacturing company, and we had planned on building our dream house. We'd purchased two lots out looking over a lake, and we were going to build our dream home. And one of the toughest days was when we had to take a sign out and put it on the lots and put the lots up for sale. Um, that was the end of one dream. We thought we were doing well. We thought we were doing what we needed to do to provide for our family and look towards the future. We didn't realize how quickly things could change.
cannot dwell on the negative. You can't think about, oh, I'll never be able to do this again or that again. You have to think about what you can do and where to go from there. I think it's also important to take things one day at a time. From the beginning, if at any point I started looking a month down the road, a year down the road, it was just overwhelming. I think just taking things a day at a time, what do I want to accomplish in the next 24 hours? What do I want Devin to accomplish? I think it's a lot easier to deal with just a day than it is a week, a year, months. I think that helps, helps you keep things in perspective. When I look back on it all, I still can't believe we ended up in China. I'm glad we did, and I'm super grateful for the compassion and care they showed Devin while he was over there. I know where Devin would be if he hadn't gone, and now instead of sitting in some nursing home somewhere, he's home with his family, and he's getting his life back, and he's getting better day by day. I just knew if we could give him a chance, Devin of all people would do the rest. You know, I asked him just yesterday, I said, Devin, tomorrow's the one year anniversary of your stroke. Is there something you want to do? You know, invite some friends over, have a barbecue, get a cake? He didn't even hesitate. He just said, let's go to the gym. Come on, back up. Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, Nice job. Good. So you do us, he be doing Yeah, I know. Maybe doing Yeah, I know. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Feeling it? Yeah. I can feel this leg kicking in now. Good. How's that feel? Good? So you want a couple more? Yeah. Okay. The, the, the. I told him today, I said, you know, I said, you just really amaze me. I said, for two years, I've wanted to lose five or 10 pounds. And I said, I put on five or 10 more pounds. And I said, I can't even, I don't even have the willpower to lose five pounds and look at you. Look what kind of willpower you have. And when you look at it like that, he's quite amazing. I feel very fortunate to have him for a husband. And I feel very, very fortunate that my kids get to look at him every day and see what a true hero is, because he is one. I would have liked to be able to walk down up there, but I'm doing better today than I did yesterday. So I take it one day at a time and that's all I could do. Came here where my brave driver will. Now I'm wearing these heavy arms of steel. Don't know what is light and what is shadow. Kind of thought I did, but I guess I don't know. Here is what is, here is what is. Spiral on down to yours. What is, here is what is Don't you go walking too long in the dark So I went to the most dangerous places 
Not knowing my way back, no traces Some kind of bridge burning in gasoline I think that was me carrying the kerosene Here is what is, here is what is, what is Spiral on down to your sweetheart Here is what is, here is what is Don't you go walking too long in the dark Too long.